Hi, in this video I take a look at the MCAD feature in Autodesk's uh, 8.2.1. Now, previously we were dependent on something called Eagle uh, ULP, uh, which uh, would, Eagle Up, uh, which is a ULP which allowed us to export uh, the board design from Eagle uh, to something called SketchUp and uh, Google's SketchUp was a tool that was used for 3D design and modeling. Uh, it has it was not a professional tool. It was something that you can use for a lot of stuff. But eh. all right. So the point is, um, Autodesk, after having taken over um, Eagle, have added something uh, in addition to the IDF to 3D now. I have this PCB, I've already discussed the PCB in a different version. So if I normally used to do was I used to sign up for a 30 day trial version and uh, I could um, export my design to from an IDF tool and then I could import it into a number of tools, blah, 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 blah. I'm not interested right now. Um, this is a new button that's been added. It's called the export to ecad.io. Ecad.io is part of uh, Autodesk. So the document will be saved, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Uh, I agree. I don't know. Okay. Now, what this does is it uploads your design to Eagle ecad.io. Uh, and uh, it will allow, if you have, obviously you have an Autodesk account, even if it's a, it's a trial version of the account. So I've already logged in and you can see it's, what it's done is it's uh, create, generated a uh, model of my uh, board. So a lot of, th some stuff is missing. A lot of stuff is missing. Some of this stuff has been blundered. Um, this big component this is the booster pack so it was two lines of um, um, connectors uh, I don't have a component I know there's no component for this I'm gonna hide this component I'm gonna start uh, with you know a clean board this is the logo part this is the rocket logo hide this component uh, this is the 3.3 volt silk tag so this is a hide component uh, if you take a okay so the image has been closed um uh, refer to my previous video for more details on where the stuff is fitting in uh, let's start with this so choose component packages click on the com and this is a three pin header so use component cool uh this is an led click here previously selected hyper red led use component LED is mounted. This is shoes component. It's an SOT 230 use component. Ooh, perfect. Uh, these are headers. So four pin headers use component. Um, sometimes this may not fit in right. So just taking a look at the board from underneath, you can see it has a bit of an offset. So you can, oh, sorry, you can select the component package offset and in this case it's already decided that uh, since my footprints use this for it's gonna be I can select to 3.8 adjust the X Y and Z and so that kind of can work at apply okay you just select on home and it'll take you to back on home uh, there we go stuff is missing already no problem at all let's start with this hide this component it's sand off uh, this is a SOT 190 these are the um, MOSFETs these are resistors let's see choose component I'm gonna use resistors I'm gonna use uh, yeah I'm gonna use these resistors these are chip resistors use these components there we go Let's add a little bit uh, on the buttons so you can, sometimes you may not be able to find what you need. Off the bat, it may not be able to find it immediately, so I'm looking for a surface mount component. Uh, others, switches. Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. Let's find the smallest. This is a 6mm uh, switch. That The switch that I'm using is a bit smaller, but that seems to be the smallest thing I've got. You can upload a component to this category, but I'm just going to do components off the bat. So you can see it's a bit of a mismatch, but that's okay. And that, then I need a header and bingo. Oh, I'm missing the uh, chip. So I'm going to plug in a dip socket use component. There we go. So uh, that is my finished board. 
So once you've finished up with the components and putting everything on the board, uh, you can see that it's actually put up the components on the back as well. Uh, so the, the thing is complete. Uh, don't need to save anything, just click on my uh, ecad.io on that and uh, once you do that click on actions and then create MCAD file once you do this it's gonna ask you a number of uh, formats I uh, would say just go into the assembly file the STP file and the default option is still screen to an image um, this may work this may not work but uh, I just use this once you click create it's gonna send you an email once it's done I've just created that create an STP assembly file uh, it sends you an email yep the processing is complete and it happens about 30 40 seconds depending upon your, the size of your file then click on send to Autodesk Fusion 360 uh, I'm gonna open up Autodesk Fusion 360 I have Autodesk Fusion 360 already uh, downloaded installed and I'm using it uh, it was already running so what it's gonna do is it's gonna now take the file from here so the the step a uh, 214 file it's gonna start to import it now what do you expect it could be an st if it was an STL file it would be a, a rough gray kind of um, ugly little looking um, object but hello beautiful so with the STP with the uh, assembly file you can see it's pretty darn good uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on file, save. As soon as I do that, it's going to ask me what it is. I'm going to say MSP430 underscore, uh, let's, not, econopad, econopad, there we go. So it's going to save the econopad and I'm going to close this file. I'm going to go back into my, there we go, so it's there. I'm going to right click, let's see if it's upload. I think it's uploading. So right click, insert into current design, close this, all right, oh, save the current design. So this is gonna be uh, Econopad Enclosure, all right, so it's, uh, it's gonna be in my enclosures folder, save that. Now I'm gonna click on models, right click, insert into current design, spinny spinny, and I want it laying flat, so 90 degrees, and okay, cool. So this is really, really uh, the great part, uh, because now I can start, uh, you, from this component, I can really start designing an enclosure. How do I do that? So it's uh, on the Z plane already, so, uh, X, Y plane already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new sketch, uh, on this plane right and uh, now I can do a number of things right I can start by sketch uh, project project this whole thing uh, if I hide this you can see I've automatically gotten the uh, drawing that I uh, you know all of the vias and everything I've sim simply got that all right, so uh, what I've done is I've projected the outline of this PCB, hiding the PCB. Now this is the outline, this is the um, um, hole that I have in the uh, PCB itself. I've offset this by 1.6 millimeters to give it a little bit of wiggle room on all four sides and then given it a 2.5, uh, 1.6 plus 2.5 millimeter uh, gap so that I get 3.6, uh, sorry, two millimeters plus 1.6 to give it 3.6 millimeters in uh, wall thickness. So from the bottom side, now I'm gonna do an extrude of the whole thing, all right? So I want this to be minus, uh, the thickness I want it to be is minus, say, 1.6 millimeter, all right? So this is gonna give me my base, all right? Uh, the sketch is gonna automatically hide, I'm gonna re bring it back, and I'm gonna extrude this part, and this is gonna be my walls. I want this to be how much? Let's take a look at the MSP430 launch pad. So there's the headers and stuff, stuff, stuff. All right, so I can do uh, extend distance uh, to object. I can do this much. So it'll be flat with the um, uh, headers on this thing. I just want it to be a little more than that. All right, so I'm gonna uh, measure, I'm gonna just 
uh, select OK right now. OK. And uh, I'm then going to extrude this base a little more. So in, I'm going to create a new body. I'm going to extrude it. It's going to ask me to join. I'm going to create a new body so that I can later on modify this. Uh, I want this new body to go, say, uh, let's give it three millimeters. Okay. okay. Hold on. Uh, extrude this thing three millimeters in a new body and uh, let's make it six millimeters. Let's make it interesting. So that's six millimeters on the top. Okay. Let's hide this, hide this, and select. Uh, uh, there we go. And I want to add that hole to it. All right, I'm gonna bring that back, bring that back. All right, I'm gonna select it from this plane. So when I extrude, ah, ah, there's my there's my top. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm creating the base from an, a uh, from an uh, from uh, the cap from a, a height. All right, so Fusion 360 is a bit flaky on me, so. Um, what I've done is I've created a small enclosure. It's got a number of bodies. So this is the uh, middle part. This is the top and the cap. So these two uh, can be combined as uh, your hold on perspective of the ortho faces. There we go. So these two components, these two bodies are basically the top cap. If I remove them, so there's the uh, PCB inside the newly formed enclosure. The appearance is now of that of glass, so I can see what's going on inside. Um, you can basically now modify this to do a lot more. Like if I look at the top view, I can make cuts for the uh, headers. I can do the other header here. I can make a cut for this. I can add a button for this. I can do a push button kind of thing. I can even add a uh, mounting standoff for this thing. So there's a lot of stuff that can be done in Fusion 360 and um, I've already done a number of videos on creating enclosures for with the Fusion 360 so I won't go into the procedure uh, in this particular video. But you can see that importing uh, files from Eagle has become a lot more easier and uh, once you have this kind of model in Fusion 360 uh, the whole thing becomes the designing process and the prototyping phase kind of becomes really easy you can 3d print the enclosure uh, get things out really really quickly uh, so this was my uh, look at MCAD.io uh, and uh, exporting from Eagle to Fusion 360 uh, if you have some uh, ideas, you can leave them in the comments. If you like what I did and my videos, you can subscribe and like and share. Uh, so thanks for watching and see you in the next video.